Well, greetings, my rhythm section of YouTube followers. What fresh hell awaits us today? Um, other than a YouTube policy, which will get me demonetized for saying hell, hell. Um, I'm not monetized anyway. I don't care. That's why they don't recommend my videos to anyone. Because I've had monetization turned off on my channel since day one. Anyhow. What do we have here? Um, <laughs> a prime example of why you should not buy Roland amplifier products. This is the Cube 120 XL base. Uh, I bought this. This is actually my amp. And, you know, as long as I've been doing this, you'd think I would know better than to buy some in highly integrated piece of crap like this. I've had okay luck with Roland products in the past being reliable for the most part, and I figured I'd give this a go because it basically made my weekly gigging routine much lighter and more compact. As you can see, that's just a small little combo amp, and it did everything I needed, and it also saved me dragging around a few pedals because I do use some reverb. Well, the reverb on this kind of sucks, to be honest with you, but it, that's n neither here nor... I mean, who wants plate reverb on their bass? Like, give me room and hall. Plate? Or even... You know, even room's kind of weird. Um, so, huh, what's wrong with this thing? Okay. Well, you know, it works until it doesn't, and then it crackles and fizzes and makes bitty angry noises at you. At first I was convinced that the main filter caps must be going because it was humming really badly. Um, you know, this thing's not even five years old. Uh, it's a discontinued model now. Back when it first started fizzing and spitting and s making angry noises, I sent it back under warranty or I took it into their warranty dealer, of course. The guy said, oh, I can't find anything wrong with it. I was like... Okay, so what's wrong with this thing? Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, you know, apart from... You, know, you might be tempted to think that with intermittent fizzles and crackles and stuff that there would be bad solder joints. And, you know, you're probably not far off. Uh, this thing looks like it was soldered by a 12-year-old. I mean, it, it, some of these... You know, the camera won't really pick it up, but some of these surface mount solder joints are absolute crap. It, it's really a shame to see that this is this was ever called a Roland product. I mean, yeah, little hand touch up there somebody did. Anyway, the problem with this amp is not, as it turns out, the solder joints. The problem is a stupid design flaw, and uh, I guess I think we, we we know why this amp is discontinued. These three studs right here and this is a theme you might remember from the barney oliver this whole front pcb which has got all the tone controls and selection and everything on it the grounds on this are through these studs and those studs make contact with the other circuit board here here and here and all of it is screwed together in the hopes that this provides some sort of electrical ground. It doesn't. Not for shit. Um, let's take a look here. So, I'm just going to measure the ohms between the top of the stud and the copper pad that it's mounted to. And let's take a look at the Keith Leo here. Oh, look at that. We got a nice low reading there. No, we don't. We've got 3.3 ohms. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> just from there to there is 3.3 ohms. That's a bit of a problem. Let's take a look at this one. And then let's go from, from there to the, the copper pad that it's on. And, oh dear, 5 point something kilo ohms from there to there. And let's take a look at this one. Oh, it's only 16, 17 whole ohms. Wow, what a great connection. So, that is what Roland calls a product you can take to a gig where 
one whole circuit board is grounded through connections that go high impedance with just the tiniest little bit of age. Ridiculous. Absolutely freaking ridiculous. Um, don't buy rolling shit. Uh, anyway, what am I going to do about it? Uh, I'm either going to scrape back some uh, solder mask here and tack in... Uh, tack in some wires and and manually ground this i mean if you look at this there's three chances for this thing to ground because this whole ground plane is, goes along here and actually that's a different one but it, this goes along here maybe there's a jumper on the other side i don't know i haven't pulled this board it goes along here down the bottom around here and over to here so these two are definitely connected. I think this one is connected as well. Let's test it. Let's see how bad they've screwed us here. Let's 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 for fun. Uh, they can hold the camera in place. Let's see here. Let's measure. Uh, oy, oy, oy. I don't know. I, I don't have enough hands here. Let's see. I'll, I'll hold the camera and measure this terminal with my left hand. And when I'm going to measure from the circuit board to the circuit board, and I'm not going to be able to. Okay, that is a less than a quarter of an ohm from from this pad to this pad. But from this stud to this stud. Huh, now it's bouncing all over the place. Uh, 200 ohms, 150, it just bounces all over the place. But anyway, <laughs> anything more than like a half an ohm for your ground is <laughs> I mean hell even that much is too much you gotta be fucking kidding me Roland you absolutely have to be fucking kidding me that this is what you give to people um, I'm going to have to make a ground for your shitty product wow alright well anyway uh, that's it for this little update um, I'm just uh, testing the old YouTube demonetization filters there Make sure, uh, I want to make sure that I stay demonetized. Um, anyway, enjoy and stay away from rolling amps. All right, so what did I do about it ultimately? Um, well, a couple more observations. Number one, um, the ground that goes through these, that goes through these posts is also present on these two pins right here of the cable that connects it to the other board. So there is another ground, but of course <laughs> there's also a ground loop, isn't there, right? Like you've got two different paths to ground, <laughs> one through a mechanical connection that's shitty and one through the... <sighs> Clearly based on all the effort they went to to make these pads conductive they're supposed to be that way for a reason so what how did i solve it well i took the original uh focus you ave um i took the original posts and i wrapped them in copper foil um, which is adhesive and thick and I wrapped it all the way over the top so that there's now copper coming over the tops of these instead of just whatever metal it is. And and then I also soldered them at the base, just on one side. Oh, come on and focus, damn it. Just a little blob of solder. And so now all three of these posts are uh, much more conductive than they were. And from one to the other, it is a tenth of an ohm or so. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to be bolted up to... Actually, it's it's this side, not the other side. They're going to have to be bolted up to those. And so I've scraped away some of the solder mask on these. And I'm going to make sure that there is a good mechanical connection. It still has to go through these stupid screws. Unless I decide to solder these on the other end as well. Um, makes it a little less disassemblable, but not too bad because again, 
I've only soldered to the copper foil on the outside, which is just adhesive tape to these posts. So you can unscrew, you can unscrew this and get it off of there. It's just going to rip the tape off the post. Uh, and well, hopefully not the pad off the board. Uh, given the quality of the boards, who knows? But this is the solution I've come up with. And uh, yeah, well, you can thank Roland for uh, giving you a similar dilemma if you own this amp.